What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host. It is Monday, February 7th, and I am not in my usual chair located at the Brinson Compound. Instead, I am in a, I'm in a, I'm in a room, a hotel room in Los Angeles, because it's Super Bowl week, and uh, we're out here doing some shows. If a couple of uh, notes. One, this is going to be the uh, the ultimate gambling preview show with R.J. White, our good friend. Uh, there's a big thing on Sportsline you're going to want to check out. We'll tell you about that in a second. I also want to note that if you are a loyal podcast listener, we will be doing a uh, video show. Myself, Ryan Wilson, and John Breach every day. I believe every day we'll have the full programming, which you can tune in about 1 o'clock. Oh, excuse me, 4 o'clock Eastern time to 5 o'clock Eastern time. So if you love the Pick 6 podcast, you want to support us, we appreciate you checking that out. That's on CBS Sports HQ. Now you can just get the CBS Sports app on your phone, your you know, whatever, your Roku, Fire Stick, your smart TV, however you do that. And you can watch it for free, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, every pretty much every single day this week. Also, of course, keep subscribing to YouTube. We'll be uh, sure we'll have, we'll have live shows and tons of content all week long. Hit the uh, turn on your alert so you'll be notified when we go live. Like and comment if you're listening on Spotify. Give us a five star rating. Joining me on Eastern Time, having waited six hours for me, which I guess is a macrocosm of, of dealing with me in general. RJ White, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Only slightly longer than usual when we when we do our picture. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, this was actually out of my control. So um, I, I was I was on time for everything, and uh, and the and the travel gods decided. We actually had an altercation at the end of my flight coming into L.A. Um, between a, uh, a one gentleman who tried to walk to the front of the uh, plane and leave or like he wanted to be the first guy off. And the pilot stopped it on the runway. And then like people were heckling him as he was going back to his seat. And then there was a bunch of yelling. It was just a very awkward scene. At any rate. I didn't know you were on the same plane as Prisco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ho, ho! Uh, Pete, I think Pete bought a giant can of Pringles. To slowly eat one Pringle like every ten seconds, just so he could ride on the plane without a mask on. Good for him, I guess. <laughs> um, at any rate, coming uh, available today on Sportsline.com. This is something you guys have been doing. You've been you've had a big hand in it for the last several years. I, I think I would assume now that, given your promotion uh, at our company, that this is kind of your like really your baby, right? Uh, this is the ultimate gambling guide. The Sportsline Ultimate Gambling Guide for the Super Bowl, LA versus Cincinnati, picks, props, and projections. It is available for. Is it? T- tell us. Tell the tell the listeners where they can get this incredible gambling guide. I believe it is like th- twenty six pages, rich with data, projection, props, and picks. Yeah, we got over seventy something prop picks in there. We got, um, I think nine expert picks, you know, me, Larry and uh, NFL editor, Brett Anderson, who had a great season picking games for sports line. He, he contributed to the props picks there. Um, but yeah, it, like you said, it's a lot of data in there. Uh, it'll be available on CBS sports.com. It'll in the super bowl arena. You go to NF CBS sports.com slash NFL slash super bowl slash I think prop bets guide is, is the link. And, um, once it's live, it, it is live Monday morning. You know, we send it into the, to the product team there. They'll get it loaded up. What you do is you go there, you'll see a box, you know, under the intro for four paragraphs in that says sign up to get the uh, the guide, you know, at this, um, you know, in this box and we'll send it to your email. So all you do is put your email in there. We send it to your email for free. You can read the PDF, download the PDF, take it with you to the books, get the edge you need when you're making your picks or on your phone or whatever. Um, so, yeah, check the link in the description of this video. If you're watching this on YouTube, Debo is going to throw that in there for us and uh, you should just be able to click through there once it's live. Excellent stuff. And of course it is free, which is, you know, you don't, you don't, you know, you, you're encouraged to have a, uh, a sports line membership. It is not expensive. There's, t- uh, as you point out, tons of great picks and great content on there. Um, and, uh, but, but you can get this for free if you want. Yeah, And, and in this guide, you get nine expert picks for free because you get three of us. And if you sign up to sports line and go to our main expert props article, you get 30 prop picks because you get 10 experts contributing to that. So yeah, you know, triple, all, all you gotta do is sign up for the, for this one month and see what we have to offer on sports line. Not just the props article. We got props that have to do with the models projections because the model projects all the stats for the game. So it'll tell you what, where it's strong and where it's weak on, on, on these picks as well um, that you should, you should, you know, target there. You got a lot of, 
other props content uh, all throughout the week. I'll be putting up some entertainment type props, digging into the national anthem, whether you should go over or under that, uh, coin toss uh, stats, all those kind of things. So um, Sportsline, Sportsline subscription pays for itself, as everyone knows, when they get it to the NFL season and start back in some of these picks, they uh, they all seem to like it a lot. So. Yeah, no, it, it, uh, it, it does very, very well on a regular basis. Uh, oh, uh, Debo points out, Debo, of course, uh, you know, handling podcast uh, producing duties. Listening back to last year, they crushed the Bucks first half uh, under for Bucks first half of the team to score last wins the game as well as Mahomes under. So that was a great job by the Sportsline crew. Uh, if you're on that, that was that was the opposite of the uh, sharp or the the square play. I think you know the the public liked Mahomes because it's Mahomes, and then you know the Bucks took care of business. And if you were on the Bucks. You cash there. Uh, there will also be a link in the description of this podcast if you want to click through to uh, to get that um, to get that uh, the the, uh, the guide downloaded. Sorry, I'm 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 not used to my current setup with my podcast, so I'm sort of I'm like used to having two monitors and not holding this gigantic uh, snowball microphone. You can't hear. Stop picking up the you're picking up the thing there, Diva. Be careful. Be careful. All right. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to. Okay. Uh, all right, let's talk about some generic, like general game trends to know about this game, RJ. What um, what stood out to you? Because this line has, I mean, you know, it opened up at three and a half. Although some some spots had like five, and it ticked to four, and then four and a half, and now it's sort of in that dead zone where maybe it moves a little bit more, but maybe not. Um, the total has dropped down to forty eight and a half, unless it's moved uh, since I've been traveling today. I was traveling on Sunday. Uh, what are some trends to know about? Like what we've seen from this, and, and and what you're looking at when you look at this game. Yeah, so with these this matchup, these teams are combined five and one to the under this postseason. The Rams Buccaneers game was the only one that went over, and that's kind of like a a rally by the Bucks made made it get there. Um, in that sense, when you look at the Bengals, you're talking about a team. It, their trip from their worst NFL team in the league to the Super Bowl appearance happened in three years, tied for the quickest ever turnaround with Carolina in 2003 and San Francisco in 1981. They're also tied with three teams for the fewest wins in the season prior to the Super Bowl appearance. You remember the 49ers did that; they went four and 12, and then they made the Super Bowl. Since he just did that too, they went they they had a four win season and they did that. What interested me was Zach Taylor's career win percentage um, entering the Super Bowl is 337, and that's the worst by that's the worst. Worst ever by a Super Bowl coach, but not only is it the worst ever, it's the, it's the worst ever by more than a hundred points. The, the next closest was four thirty eight by Bill Walsh. Who, who uh, Bill Walsh? Yeah, in his nineteen eighty one. That's yeah, San Francisco Super Bowl coming out that that bad year. So um, yeah, it, it's interesting that they're here. At, they were one hundred fifty to one to to win the Super Bowl before the season. They would tie the Rams at ninety nine as the team with the longest preseason Super Bowl odds uh, to win uh, since at least nineteen eighty. Um, and, but you know, there is some things going for them. The team entering the Super Bowl with the worst record, which is the Bengals, won 11 of the past 13 Super Bowls, covered in 14 of the past 15 Super Bowls, and that doesn't include the games where they were identical because you can't really pick a worse team if they have the same record. But, but it seems like this team that comes in with the worst record actually does well against the spread for whatever reason. Mm. Does that make what, what, what do you think about this? Because I see that the not to give it away, but it looks like the model likes the Bengals in this spot, you know, just, just a close game. Um, what, what's your sense of it as just like, like RJ sense. Yeah. I wanted to be on the Rams at four. Um, so, so that, that was my play against the spread. I think for, for typically in sport in Super Bowls, if you want to be on the favorite, you want to be on the money line closer to the game because people are going to be hammering the, the underdog money line and it's going to drop down. I think even now you can find money lines at like minus 200 at books that are given out four and a half, which is way below price. You know, I think you right. typically would see 225, 235 in these games um, with, with where it is now. So you're already seeing a discount and it's just going to get even worse once you get closer to the game. So um, I think if you like the Rams, the strategy to wait and play that money line hopefully it dips down a little more to the 190 180 range and you're going to get great value on that i think um because that, that that's the way i'm leaning for the game i just think it's tough for the Bengals to come in here in this environment young team compete with their offensive line um so i would want to be on the rams here i think they have better veteran leadership um guys that have been there before mcveigh probably is going to be taken taken you know aback like he was coaching against bill belichick in this first super bowl couldn't do anything offensively in that game i think he'll have a better time here now um you know zach taylor had the same exposure in that game obviously you know as a, as a mcveigh disciple but a little bit different when you're in the head chair and uh you know, this is his first first time doing it himself so we'll see how that goes for him but i have more confidence in mcveigh coming in and coaching well in this game yeah and i think too that it's likely mcveigh thinks about that pregame handshake 
suck up to Belichick. I don't know, five or 10 times a day because <laughs> he, you know, he could have easily won that Super Bowl and uh, it, it cost him what uh, let's talk about some key player props. Well, yeah. One right. more thing on McVay before we move on, he's the fifth head coach to reach multiple Super Bowls in his first five seasons. And the previous four went six and two in those games and they all won at least one Super Bowl. Now, several times it was winning the first one and how he obviously did that, but out of the, all four of them, they, they went six and two and they each have one win. So you figure if he's going to keep the streak going, he's got to win this one. Sorry, I was cutting off the air conditioning in the room. I like to set it to 65 when I get into a room, a hotel, a hotel room. I'm a sick of. Um, yeah, great stuff on there. Let's dive into the player props. Um, when we look up, uh, let's let's just let's just go team by team, player by player, and we'll start with the Bengals and Joe Burrow. And by the way, I gotta tell you, the the the, the sports line ultimate gambling guide is super clean. Like it, it just looks really good. Um, a very, very impressive layout and just like a very Easy to read, easy to sort of uh, take in. You know, like page, uh, what, what page is this? Uh, page six, Joe Burrow props. Wholly dedicated to Joe Burrow props. And uh, give me one that you like or you think the model likes or you think that's worth looking at for Burrow. Yeah, great job by designer uh, at CBS, Tim Burke. He, he did the the, uh, the layout and everything there, made it look super clean, uh, did a great job with it. So shout out to him for doing that. The one I like for Burrow the most is under 275 and a half passing yards. This one, I think, opened at 276 and a half, dropped down to 273 and a half, and now it's uh, went back up a couple couple points. I think we're getting a decent value there. Um, the Rams excel at defending deep passes, and that's been a big component in games where Burrow has piled up a lot of yardage. You think about those Chiefs games, especially in the regular season, they were just bombing those deep passes and hitting chase and breaking long plays. Um, so that's how you pile up the yardage, but the, the Rams are pretty good at defending that. And the sports line simulation, we have the numbers that they simulate in this guide as well. So you just get the raw yardage number. You can go and, and compare it to what books you're offering and see which way you want to go, especially if it's close to the number. You don't know which side you like, if the line's moved from what we have you can actually see what the simulation has in there and they have this number at just 250 yards so we're way over what they have simulated so wow. if you tr trust those it's 10,000 simulations of this game and, the, and they take the average of that and we got to 250 on an average game so he's gonna have to be way higher than average and he's had to put together one of the exceptional you know outlier games to get over this number so i think the value here is definitely going to under there yeah and you know the other thing is you can oftentimes like it, part of the part of the concern if of taking that the burrow under would be that you know the Bengals are trailing well i mean you have, you have a couple game scripts you, you can get out of this with the Bengals are leading and Bengals are running the football uh you can get out of this with a low scoring close game where they're running joe mixon a bunch on first down they're not trying to open things up with that passing offense and i do think zach taylor's and sean mcveigh too probably will be conservative in this game because mcveigh doesn't want to come out and just give away free possessions taylor should be nervous going up against his old boss and we saw taylor runs the ball on first down all the time. I mean, Tony Romo, Tony, Tony Romo was killing him for it uh, last week. So I, I kind of dig that as well. Jo, uh, what, do you, what do you think about Joe, M Joe Mixon? Yeah, I would go under his rushing yards to uh, 62 and a half there. Um, LA is allowed no more than 61 rush yards in any playoff game. They're fifth in, on the season, the regular season in yards per carry. Mixon did have 88 yards on 21 carries last week. But generally, he's been in the 40s and 50s prior to that. He's not has an average higher than 3.9 yards per carry um, before that game since November. So if he's only rushing, you know, with a behind that offensive line for three and a half yards, 3.8 yards, whatever per carry, he's going to need a lot of work to get over this number. You know, you're talking about 16 carries get you to 64 yards if you're if you're averaging four. You know, so you might need 18, 19 to get over this number. And um, I just don't know that the game script is going to allow that. So I think there's some value going on the under with mix in there. Any concerns that it the game starts out like last last week and the the Bengals are trailing and forced to chuck them or forced to well I mean I, I guess if you, if that would be good if it was if for the under right oh any, I guess any concerns that they they were trailing last last week or two week last week and didn't abandon the run and might still continue to try to run the football. Yeah, obviously that that's, you know, if you follow what they did last week and he gets another 21 carries, he's probably going to go over this number. The question is, is are they going to be effective doing that? Um, are they even going to be able to do that, especially if the Rams are running it too? Because the Chiefs were throwing the ball, you know, and they weren't really focused too much on the run. And so the, the game kind of extended a little bit. For the Bengals, they got to run more plays than maybe they're going to run in this game. I think this will be a more quick, quick pace game in terms of um, the action on the field, not not for overall the day because we know how those Super Bowls go. It's just nothing about the Super Bowl day is quick pace. But the action on the field, the clock might be running a little more, a few, fewer uh, amount of plays total run than uh, than people than it, if it would be like a Kansas City Tampa Bay type game. You know, uh, Jamar Chase, big play threat. 
not necessarily a reception monster, tons of receiving yards, but he just goes for big yardage. Uh, is that, do you think that will continue in the Super Bowl? And does that give you possible outs to look for with Chase? Yeah, he averaged just 4.8 receptions per game in the regular season. Only had eight of his 20 games with six catches, including the playoffs. So I like going under five and a half receptions at plus 105. Um, you're yeah. getting, you know, a plus value to go get on the under there, even though that's his typical game is going under that number. Even with the recent uptick, when you just take the last five, which we also do in the guide, we tell you what their averages are in the last five games. So you get a recent look and then you get the average for the whole season. Um, he's had 5.5. So he's right on the number. So you're still, when you factor in the plus 105 you're still getting value going on the under even if he has um, his recent average as opposed to his season long average um, so the sports line sims i brought up earlier they haven't met five receptions on average so they also think it's good value on plus odds so i think i'm playing a lot of unders on the Bengals, as you can see but that that just seems like the value is here for, for that so i like him going under that number well and uh t- two more factors just to add to that one uh you know we've seen the Bengals do a lot of run run pass or run pass pass like run short pass short pass um, in, in other words, like they're just trying to convert those third downs, asking Joe Burr to do good work on, on third down. They tend to focus in, I feel like, more on Tyler Boyd and potentially the return of C.J. Uzama, who had a nice uh, nice last week of practice, I think. We'll, we'll have to see what that, you know, where he goes from there. But if Uzama comes back, I think that benefits uh, the taking the Boyd under, especially at that plus money. Um, all right. Proceeding with the uh, right along. T. Higgins. Uh, if you were, uh, you know, Higgins, I actually have a, I don't know if this has any chance of cashing. I have an outstanding T Higgins will have the most receiving yards in the playoffs. I assume that's dead because of Cooper cup, but yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah. Maybe he, maybe he goes for 300 here. I, yeah. We need some long receptions on that, but I like him going under 24 and a half yards on his longest reception for right. minus 125. juice is moving toward the under here. It was minus 115. Um, he has just one reception of this length in the postseason, And like I said earlier, LA is great at defending deep passes and the pass rush likely going to force burrow into quicker throws. So I don't know that the opportunity is going to be there for him to get some big plays. So um, on the Higgins front, I'd go with the under on that longest reception prop, I think is the way to go. All right. I love it. Do you have anything else from the Bengals that you'd like to look at uh, from their standpoint before we get to the Rams? No, we'll 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 talk about um, some Bengals stuff later. But you t- mentioned yep. Uzama coming back. Um, I think Boyd could be a sneaky sneaky play on overs if Uzama isn't hundred percent or he doesn't come back because they're kind of forced into quick throws if the pass rush is getting there. And I think that's where Boyd is going to get you know more receptions than usual in in the offense because of that. Yeah, they um that that's sort of what happened against the Chiefs is they had. Because Ramsey was covering Chase. I mean, excuse me, not Ramsey. Was covering, they were, they were, they, it's been a long day. They were covering Chase. They were making sure to cover Chase aggressively. And then in those short third down situations after Uzama got hurt, Tyler Boyd stepped up in a big way. I agree with you. I, I think receptions is probably the way to go with Boyd, especially if they're really utilizing him on third down if Uzama is is not in there. All right, let's talk Rams. Uh, what, what prop do you like for future Hall of Famer Matthew Stafford? You in this Hall of Fame talk? Is he retiring after the season? No, I'm just trying to. Wake you? I'm just. <laughs> I'm. I'm the one who created the public narrative about it. Like that's a fact, and so I'm leaning into it. It drives Pete Prisco nuts. Um, I saw Peter King getting all in a tizzy about it, but he's like, ah, it's like, no, he's not a Hall. If he wins the Super Bowl and walks away from football, he's not probably. I mean, I think he would be a Hall of Famer, but he would, certainly wouldn't be a first ballot Hall of Famer. My anticipation is that Stafford, if they win the Super Bowl. And then he plays for four more seasons is going to add 20,000 yards or whatever to his totals. And he's just going to, it's just gonna be impossible to keep him out. Yeah. But my point is, why are we having this discussion now? Let him play those four seasons and then we'll talk about it. I just like to pound my <laughs> chest. <laughs> no, it's, it's strictly a me thing. I mean, it's, it's so very selfish. Anyway, uh, let's, let's be, let's be, yeah. let's be more I, selfless to the listeners and we'll, and we'll, uh, we'll give him a prop for Stafford. I go longest completion over 38 and a half yards on Stafford. He's had 21 passes of 40 plus yards this year, including three in the playoffs and cups caught 11 of those, which will come up with my cup prop later. Um, Since he's allowed only 12 passes of 39 plus, but three of those have come in the playoffs. So um, higher concentration once they play these better teams in the playoffs um, with guys like AJ Brown and, you know, and Tyreek Hill, um, uh, you know, uh, those, those better receivers, Tyreek kill those guys getting those long passes. So um, I think Stafford can complete a long pass in this one, 40 plus yards. Um, so I would play that to go over. Cam Akers has looked, uh, I would say up and down. I mean, I know he, he looked really explosive at the beginning of the playoffs. So not quite, you know, had those two fumbles against Tampa Bay and it, it, you can't tell if he's just going to pop one off or not. Um, 
what do you think about acres? Because I would guess that in the second half, if the Rams have a lead, we see a lot of cam acres. Maybe. I mean, he fumbled twice against the Bucs and he played 81% of the snaps in that game. Then the next week he had 13 carries versus San Francisco, played 39% of the snaps and wasn't on the field, mm-hmm. you know, even half as much. So if that's what we're going to see in this game plan uh, of we're scared of him fumbling the ball and he's going to kill us in the second. The only way we can lose in the second half if we're up is if we turn it over. And if you get cold feet there, you might see Sonny Michelle in the game. You might see a little Daryl Henderson if he's active. Um, so I, I don't know. Henderson in the card to be active? It's it's a it was a possibility coming out of the, the you know the week you know he could be an IR activation is what they were saying after the game, wow. um, but we'll see you know we have the whole week to to monitor practice reports and see how that goes. But either way, I like Akers to go under sixteen and a half rush attempts um, because of that reduced snap count and um, you know the sense that if they don't trust him to, to protect the ball in the second half, I don't know that he's going to see a high number of rushes in the second half. He averaging only two point eight yards in the playoffs too, so he's not really deserving of being the focal point on offense that gets eighteen to twenty carries. I, I don't think. So. So um, if Henderson does come back and you see he's active in the game, definitely jump on that this number because losing even two to three carries to Henderson is a, is a, is a big deal when you get talking about a number this high. We're not talking about twelve or eleven, you know, rushing attempts were in the high teens. So um, I think if he's in line to lose even that to Henderson because he's active, this is a smash spot. Yeah, absolutely. Henderson active is you immediately go and bet one and a half to two units on the under of. Uh, Cam Akers carries, as RJ just pointed out. Cooper Cup. Oh, man. I got some CLV on his uh, receiving total. I took over 102 and a half already. I love it. Not scared of it. Cooper Cup's hard to stop. You like that or you like something else with Cup? Yeah, I, I think that's a good one. I know Larry likes that also. Um, I, my favorite one is the longest reception over 28 and a half yards. I mentioned he had 11 catches of 40 plus yards. Um, this number was 27 and a half. It already moved up a yard. So I think people jumped all over that. They just see a long reception for him in this game. I still like it at this number since he's allowed five 30 plus receptions in their last two games, three to AJ wow. Brown, one each to the to, to Tyree Kill and Michael Hardman. Um, so they are not stopping these, these explosive plays. And when somebody gets one, you figure it's got to be cup on the Ram side. He has 22 receptions of at least 29 yards this year that's an average of over one per game including the playoffs so um i think it's it's he's going to get to that 30 yard catch 29 yard catch whatever hit this over yeah i like that too and you're getting a reasonable juice because it just moved up uh what about odell beckham 23 and a half for his longest reception he's also at five and a half receptions plus 120 which is kind of crazy and 64 and a half receiving yards yeah, a little bit aggressive on the receptions total because he's had six receptions each of his last two games. So I would hit the under on that at minus 150. It's heavy juice, but the sports line sims have him well under five receptions. Um, and, you know, when you factor in the average of the last five games is still below five and a half, even though he got to six the last two games. So, um, you know, you see these trends, you figure people are just going to keep going up and up and up. But I think it's more of a Cooper Cup game than anything. And Beckham has some key plays, you know, on third down or in the, in the red zone, especially. But I don't think that he gets to six receptions, so I'd play the under. Okay. Game. So the, you know, you can bet on the like the Super Bowls. You can bet on the first quarter, first half, second quarter, third quarter, whatever you want of any game in the NFL. But it feels more fun to do it in the Super Bowl. Um, any particular game props stand out for you, whether it's a you know, the the Rams are favored by a half a point in each of the four quarters, and uh Rams are minus three in the first half. Hmm. Yeah, I think first half you got to look Rams, even though it's minus three compared to a minus four and a half spread. Um, so you, you figure it's not it's not even close to half. Um, so so, but I think the value is there. Their defense allows three fewer points than Cincinnati's defense in the first half, and the reverse is true in the second half. Since the defense plays much better after the break because they make adjustments well. Uh, Super Bowls tend to start slow though, so you get these these lower scoring first quarters, lower scoring first halves in general. Um, but with the Rams having that experience advantage with the with the leadership, we talked about better quarterback. Well, not better quarterback but more experienced quarterback probably not not as likely to wilt in the moment we know i know you're going to talk about joe burrow big game big big game burrow he always rolls in these must win games but uh i have a little bit more confidence in stafford especially with their defensive matchup so um, i would expect uh rams are going to get to the halftime with a lead so i would be willing to lay the minus 105 on the first half with the rams and your best quarterback is probably going to be flip the other side take the Bengals at plus a half in the third quarter even though it's minus 125 they become the kings of halftime adjustments they give up the fewest points per game in the third quarter this year of any team. Hmm. So um, I think the Rams could come out slow in the third quarter, especially if they already have the lead, be a little more, more conservative since he could get a rolling a little bit, make it a tighter game. So if I'm playing one of those quarterbacks, it's going to be the Bengals in the third quarter. I was just looking at the um, 
box score for the LSU Clemson game. And if you recall, like Clemson, I could felt like early on, like because I had a ton of I had Clemson heavy against Joe Burrow, which I regret. Um, but it, it felt like at the time you're like, all right, Clemson's can definitely hang. And then the Bengals, then the Bengals, the 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 Tigers, LSU threw 21 up in the second uh, second quarter. Uh, we got 31 points total. And I'm not saying these things are the same, but I th- it was it was uh, surprising because you read uh, Jamar Chase 52 yard pass from uh, from Joe Burrow, and then it's like T Higgins 36 yard run. T. Higgins was on Clemson. There's a lot of guys from the championship uh, team on uh, on this uh, on this bingo squad. All right, let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk some more props. So early props. Looking up, tell me <laughs> early props in order like coin toss, opening kickoff be a touchback. Will there be a score in the first five and a half minutes? First team to score. First score of the game will be a touchdown or field goal or safety. Uh, team uh, charged with first timeout, et cetera, et cetera. I guess you could do first coach's challenge. Challenge. Uh, what What do you like out of that group? Yeah, we found some good trends uh, in the guide to read about it. The one I wanted to highlight here is the first score of the game. Field goal is safety plus 140. It's the, it's the heavy underdog, even though 10 of the past 14 Super Bowls have cashed for field goal and safety in this prop. I know Rams and Cincinnati have good offenses. You think, well, they're going to score touchdowns because, you know, they're good offensively. But, I mean, most teams that make the Super Bowl have have good offenses, and this trend still hits. So you're not going to you're not gonna really find many duds when you play the Super Bowl. So with the Rams' strong red zone defense and Cincy likely willing to attempt long field goals at McPherson anyway um, and McVay, probably willing to take the points and be conservative early. I think field goal safety has a good chance coming in. And you can play the plus 140 here, but Caesars also has, you can pick the exact outcome of the first score, whether which team gets the first score too. Mm. And um, so you, the t- both teams with the touchdowns are, um, are the favorites, you know, higher up, but then both of the field goals are plus 400 Rams plus 400 Bengals plus 400. You play both of those with the even amount, you're getting plus 150 instead of your plus 140 in this pick. So the, really the way to go is to split your bet half between those two things and then if the field goal comes in, you get a little bit more money than you would have otherwise. Yeah, I, I, I can, I'll never forget. I think the first, wasn't the first first score safety was in Broncos Seahawks. And it was like, you know, it just never happened. People stopped dealing with it. And then you know, it, anyway, it was like 80 to one or 800 to one or something like that. Uh, one thing I would point out on these early props and the sports line highlights it. Will, will, oh no, will opening kickoff be a touchback? And it says only six of the 55 Super Bowls in history have a gun with a touchback. Oh, and so, yeah, no is plus 160, which is just wrong because for a couple of reasons. One, um, you know, as you point out, like historically, it happens like that all the time. Two, you have a return guy who, you know, the cameras are flashing. You have a return guy who's amped up, wants to make a play. And then three, this great factoid from Pat McAfee of the Pat McAfee Show, former kicker for the Colts punter for the Colts, I guess, who you know also did kickoffs. Apparently, they pull the ball, they pull the actual Super Bowl ball out of a box right before kickoff. And he said he said earlier this year that it is a, as hard as a rock and like almost impossible to blast. So that's why these kickoffs and, you know, maybe you want to try and, you know, see if you can scare somebody into, into doing something. You know, little, anyway, point being, I think no on touchback makes a ton of sense at really good plus money. Uh <laughs> And you see these kickers last year uh, when we did this guy, both kickers were some of the league leaders in touchbacks. They were over 70% of the time kicking touchbacks. It still wasn't a touchback. It still got returned because, you know, the factors that you mentioned Um, this time, a lot less. You have Matt Gay, 63.7% of his kickoffs are touchbacks. McPherson is around 60%. So, you know, at at the price that we're talking about here, I mean, we're already going lower uh, and you're probably getting good odds if you just played a regular game with with these guys with a touchback um, and play this price. But then you factor and all the Super Bowl stuff that's related around that, it drives it down even more. And so it drives it to even better value. So if you want to play a, a plus odds thing that gives you a little bit better payout than normal, and, uh, you know, you can see if you cash that one right away, that's a good one to jump on. Yeah, I love it. Um, is there anything you're dying to talk about on late game props? Otherwise, we can move to scoring props. Yeah, I like the team to score last, uh, LA at minus 120. Uh, this is kind of tied into the um, the money line. If you like the, the money line on, on LA right now, you're laying minus 200. 
Uh, if you think they're going to win, just play this because the team that scores last typically wins, which we'll talk about here in a little bit too. Uh, LA scored last in 14 of their 20 games this year versus 11 for Cincy. Um, and since they always, you know, the team that scores last always wins at this point. Um, I think it's better than going with a money line play on the Rams. There is a different one that if you want to, you know, vary off your money line, um, that typically would come in as good odds too. That's a little bit better odds than this at plus 120, which we'll get to at the end. But um, this is a good one to play too. Okay, scoring props. Such things as total TD scored in the game over five and a half is uh, minus 120. Longest TD scored in the game is over under 42 and a half. Team to score the longest TD, Los Angeles favored there. Will there be three unanswered, score, three unanswered scores in the game? Yes, is minus 210. I think it, it seems insane that that always hits, but it always does. Uh, successful two-point conversion, yes, plus 260 is very interesting. Total field goals made in the game over under three and a half. Longest field goal made over under 47 and a half. Shortest field goal made over under 27 and a half. Both teams with a 35 yard 35 or 35 yard or longer field goal yes uh plus 100 no minus 130 what do you like in the scoring prop territory yeah i like looking at that total field goals made over three and a half is at plus 130 and mcpherson's had four field goals in each playoff game so they he, they have confidence in him from 60 yards at this point you know they'll, they'll run him out there and kick a field goal anytime they get pat around midfield or past midfield uh since he drives have stalled out just past midfield in the playoffs you know a bunch and he has those field goals there the rams games have averaged uh 3.65 field goals on the season um so you know you get rams kicking field goals and allowing field goals that's more than three and a half and since he games have been right on the number three and a half um so with with the confidence McPherson has and the the coach has in McPherson kicking field goals, I think plus one thirty here that that juice is just off to me, and I would want to jump on that and think I'm getting value. Anything else in that scoring range you like, or you uh, move on to full game props? Yeah, there's some things that uh, some, some are stronger leans than others. Um, you know, the the shortest touchdown one is interesting because it's over one and a half yards under one and a half yards. You're basically betting, will there be a one yard touchdown? And there's been one in seven of the last nine Super Bowls. And in the two where there weren't, it came close because he had a two yard touchdown and a three yard touchdown. So you typically always going to get short, short ones. The question is, is there going to be like a pass interference that gets down to the one? Is there going to be a goal line stand that, that you have to punch it in? And Joe Mixon has been very good at rushing in from the one yard line. Five of the Bengals, six one yard touchdowns have come from him so um if the Bengals, you know in particular get down there you got to like their chances of converting so um, i think going under on that even at minus 160 is probably the, the way to go can you parlay th uh super bowl props like this like uh, under under one and a half and then three straight scores there are some if you if you go to this you know the sites the books that have it out you know they'll typically have a parlay section for same game parlay stuff and then they'll give you options and if you try to do stuff that's correlated sometimes it'll tell you you can't do those two right. you know but but um so you if you try to be clever and you know piece together something where uh, if one thing happens you hit eight legs they're not going to let you do that but um if, if you just want to build your odds up and try to hit like a massive parlay with right. unrelated stuff you can do that basically avoid paying like Minus two ten to get the yeah you know, for the juice for uh, three three straight scores. Uh, full game props, largest lead. Will the game be tied after zero zero? Total players with a pass attempt. The old uh, it's the old um, Trey Ingram. Uh, oh god, Trey Ingram. Who am I talking about? The old Philly special uh, uh, situation. Total net yards in the game you can bet on. Total third down conversions. Will there be a successful fourth down conversion? Total sacks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Tons of these. Uh, what do you like in this spot? Yeah, the, will the team that scores last win the game? Yes is minus 210. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. It's hit an eight straight for the yes. And 15 of the past 16 and 21 of the past 23 Super Bowls. When I say 15 of the last 16, the only miss was an intentional safety taken by John Harbaugh. So technically, yes, that was that was a miss. You wouldn't have cashed that one. But really in the spirit of it, it's not like they gave up a score at the end of the game. They just took the two points and, uh, and you know, a better kickoff to, uh, to think they were going to win the game, and it worked out for them. So uh, I think, yes, even at minus 210, just from the recent trends, that's going to hit. So I think if you can parlay stuff, throw that one in, in one of the parlays if they'll let you do it because um, there's not that much risk of it considering the trend. Okay, I like it. Um... What about the MVP? Yeah, so a lot of options here. Um, typically, it goes to the quarterback, we know. So um, this is your your chance to get a, a Rams money line at plus odds because you bet best bet Matthew Stafford at plus 120. Um, most efficient way to, to play the Rams money line to me. You know, um, quarterback has won the MVP award for the last five and nine of the last 12. Um, Cup is also interesting at plus 700 if you think he's going to go over his receiving total like you do if he has 100 plus yards, if he has two plus touchdowns. Um, you know, if, if Stafford throws one or two back breaking picks, they'll be looking to give it to some 
somebody else. And now, couple, now just now, happened. just really quickly, just because I want to point out that four receivers since '99 have won the MVP. Those are Julian Edelman in the 13-3 game, um, Deion Branch. It, that was in the is it in the Eagles game. I think it was the Eagles. Uh, the Eagles Pat Super Bowl when Deion Branch won. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Dima. <laughs> There's Diva quickly remembering the Super Bowl MVP of that game. Trey Burton, by the way. Trey Burton. God, I was, I was <laughs> completely blanking. I was like, I cannot think of this guy's name. Thank you. Um, and uh, and then Santonio San Holmes won it when uh, Ben Roethlisberger had been under some scrutiny off the field, obviously. And I, the voters didn't want to give it to him. And Santonio San Antonio Holmes had a huge game. And then Heinz Ward also in a low scoring game. And in those two Patriots games, we saw where. Tom Brady, like Tom Brady had won the Super Bowl MVP within the last two years of those particular games. And so I sort of wonder if there wasn't voter fatigue there. I and mean, does that concern you at all with betting on Cooper Cup? Because his odds have come down quite a bit, right? Yeah, and at plus 700, he is in great value. So it's just a, th- uh, you know, a little bit more of a lottery ticket uh, that, uh, that, than uh, a plus 120. You know, that you're – some was probably their most realistic one. If it's not going to be a quarterback, obviously that's what the odds are telling me. Now, if you want to do a super lottery ticket, the value pick yeah. there is Ty- Tyler Boyd at plus 7,500, 75 to 1. So since he, we said, going to prioritize quick passing probably, a lot of targets for Boyd, especially if Uzama is out, even if Uzama is in. I think you want to get the ball to Boyd um, and get move the chains, get those, those receptions, stay out of those third and longs which are going to kill them if they get in third and long so um i think that that's going to be good there and you look at the guys that are around him on 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 75 to 1 also you're talking about kendall blanton talking about logan wilson yeah. daryl henderson who who if he plays isn't going to get a lot of touches so uh, having a guy here who probably is going to get a decent amount of targets really makes no sense to me i don't think he's going to win mvp um but i think he does deserve to be higher than those guys for sure so i think you're getting value at this number of 75 to 1 which is also the evan mcpherson number and you know he's been awesome and i know there's going to be some some uh calls from some angle some you know areas of the some, the, some uh, analysts we some don't know analysts at, be, on the pick six podcast that he should win mvp if he has another four field goals in this game but um they're, they're not going to give it to a kicker i mean the voters are just not going to do that for for a super bowl if if it's a low scoring game where kickers matter and they the the Bengals win 12 to 9 probably give it to a defensive player or something right. like that you know so if somebody's getting picks in that game it would need to be like eight it would need to be like 18 to 18 14 and like all 18 points come from the kicker and like three over 50 yards and like no, no defensive player has an interception yeah. and, and only one guy has like a sack, you know, or one, one sack is the, is the, is the maximum. Or, or like sacks. the Rams are just, the Rams are just coughing the ball up and they're, and they're not doing anything. You know, they're, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's that's unlikely. So I like, is. I like, I think two Rams defenders make sense as longer shots. Um, Aaron and Aaron Dott, and look, and on the Cooper cup seven to one thing, Patrick Cantley was the favorite when the Amex uh, kick, uh, teed off on Thursday, and he was seven to one. Like it's way more likely that Cooper Cup wins Super Bowl MVP at seven to one than it is that Patrick Cantley just wins a golf tournament with you know a field of you know what, whatever it is like you know 120 golfers. Like I mean, just the very like if you th- just thinking comparing odds, it's you know and Cantley was in it for a long time, but I don't hate the Cup bet. I guess I'm saying. I'd much rather bet Cup at that number, and he just goes nuclear and has because if he has twelve catches, one hundred and eighty yards, and Stafford ends up you know with three hundred yards passing, and and they win in a fairly low scoring game, but it's all come come from Cup, and he'll they'll, voters will give it to him in a heartbeat. So I, I don't I didn't I was kind of pushing back on it, but didn't want to like totally. I wanted to point out that it's it's not like a bad number. Um, the two Rams defenders though that I like, Von Miller. What? He's won a Super Bowl MVP before. Super Bowl. Oh, look at that. Super Bowl 50. Panthers lost to the Broncos. And uh, Aaron Donald, who has been on the stage before, and I think just because of his ability to completely wreck an opposing offense, if he, if like the Bengals don't do much in the first first half and he's playing really well, and then he's able to tee off in the second half, uh, you know, 18 to 1, not great for a defensive player, but a guy like Aaron Donald, if he has three three sacks or something like that, the, the the buzz is going to be around Aaron Donald in, in that in the in the media box, and you want to see him like score a touchdown or get your pick or scoop up a fumble, you know, and return it for a touchdown or something. Once you get that touchdown by the defensive player, then then you really all bets are off. You know, a Malcolm Smith type of performance there. So, um, you know, that could happen with a guy that talented. You never know. So it's just hard to predict who's going to get that, but he's going to be in the mix. If there's pressure on on uh, on Burrow, you got to believe he's going to be the guy in the backfield. Yeah, and I think it, the other thing too is if you think about it like this, if Let's say, I mean, let's say the 
the Rams win the game, is 24 to 10 a reasonable score or is that just too low? I think it's reasonable. Actually, one one of my long shot plays uh, that I liked, I was looking at is a uh, Bengals exact point total. You know, you got hmm. one of the options at 100 to one is 12. And I'm like 12 isn't too, you know, four field goals again with no touchdowns at 12. But you also get the two field goals. You get their down, you know, 24 six late. They get that touchdown. And then they're like, all right, the only chance we have is to go for two here. And they don't get it. So then, then you're stuck sure. at 24 12. So I think there's, you know, with those two paths to being at 12, I think 100 to 1, I don't think he's going to hit 100 to 1, but, but uh, 100 to 1, I think it's better, better than a 1% chance. So. It's 100 to 1 for a reason. The, the, the Rams, the Bengals, I don't think that the Rams are just going to lock. I, I find it hard to believe there's locked down the Bengals for the full game, but they really do have some elite players that can exploit the Bengals' weaknesses. And so if you think that, if you think this can be a low scoring game where, you know, it's again, let's say it's uh, uh, 17, three and half or something like that. And and that sounds crazy, but the Rams and the Patriots were r- good offenses and, and it happened to them too. Um, and let's say it's 17 to three and then it comes out second half Bengals put up a couple points, but not much. And the Rams are really conservative in the second half. You're going to be looking at a defensive MVP for the Rams more than likely in a low scoring game like that. And Von Miller and and Aaron Donald have been playing great this postseason and are good splash guys. So I I, I like both of them. Uh, yeah, and the the one the one thing that would that would put me off of that of uh, going a Rams defensive player is uh, I think it's more likely if you have like a spread out offensive game, you know, with you don't have one guy that's coalescing getting all the stats. But we know that guy's going to be cup if if the Rams are scoring a big total with big. If he has a hundred yards. I think it's hard to give it to a defensive player. You're like this guy got a hundred yards, even if the quarterback didn't play well. Let's get it's it like the the Rams Pats. I mean, it's everybody was sort of wondering who the hell's. I mean, I remember being in that press box. Everybody's like, who the hell's the Super Bowl MVP? You look around, you're like, eh, Edelman's had a great game. Hey, Edelman works. Hmm. I mean, that's that's just sort of how it operates. And again, oh, as always, we stress that with these MVP bets, you were talking about reporters who are doing this as a like an extra extraneous thing. It's not, it's not like it's not their job to just sit there and monitor and vote. They're gonna fill out this ballot, run downstairs, get quotes. If it's a close game, it's often difficult to, you know, it, it, like if it's a close game, tons of points, it's going to default to a quarterback. And even if it's not a ton of points, it still might anyway. So I, I like Matthew Stafford as well because I like the Rams in this spot. Um, anything else from the ultimate gambling guide, RJ? No, I mean, we still went over, what, 10 props or so? That means we got I like 40. We, we got like 70 more, you know, or 60 more or whatever. So a lot of good stuff that we haven't talked about. You get Larry's best three picks in the guide. You get my best three picks uh, out of all the props, including one we haven't talked about here. Um, so de- definitely encourage people to go check it out and, uh, you know, let me know what you think on Twitter. I know Twitter is a great place with a lot of encouragement and people people <laughs> lifting each other up. So come, come yell at me how great I am <laughs> instead of what you usually do. Go lift up RJ White on Twitter at RJ White One. Go check out the ultimate Super Bowl gambling ultimate uh ultimate Super Bowl 56 gambling guide powered by Sportsline RJ you got a busy job and you still take time to sit around and wait for me to get in from a flight you're the best buddy talk to you soon <laughs>